Tuesday. Good evening, good evening. It's Tuesday, March 17th. Happy St. Patty's Day. I have green in the background on my iris paintings. Welcome to part two of Wellness Through the Four Elements, particularly during this COVID-19 outbreak and trying, challenging times. So I talked last evening about the air element and also a little bit about some facts around the importance of getting different practices into our lives that can help promote our wellness. So tonight is water and one of my favorite subjects. Love it. Water element, we've probably heard the numbers ranging of our body is 65% water, our body is 75% water, our body is 85% water. Pretty close enough. It doesn't, the number itself, certainly for these purposes, <clears throat> do not matter. The most important thing is that water is not second, I don't feel. It's actually right in line and right in step with the importance of air. Air is the first element that our bodies need to survive and thrive. We stop breathing, unless we have artificial help with that, we are no longer living. Now with water deprivation in our bodies, the breakdown takes a little bit longer because the body is so adaptive and it's so amazing. That's a huge piece of why I do the, the work that I do. Water is required for every single metabolic function in our body. And that's everywhere starting at the top. That's starting from our brain and I will ask you, does anybody know what the percentage of our brain is comprised of water? I'll tell you. That number I know. Our gray matter, our brain is 85% water. 85. This is why it's really a great practice to be starting to feel a little bit low, a little sloggy, both energetically, but also mentally and starting to like, ah, oh, you know, I'm feeling, it's starting to feel kind of bombed. I'm, I'm anxious about all this stuff that's going on. Grab your water bottle, grab your water bottle because that 85%, our body, our brain needs that fresh water to come into our system to do its basic metabolic functions, thinking. So <clears throat> grab that, grab that water bottle. Like I say, when your, your energy is kind of starting to wane, I often can feel it like in the afternoon after lunch that, you know, we get those kind of like after lunch woozies and yes, our body's digesting the food that we've had and so on. It's usually warmer in the afternoons once we get to the warmer times. Um, so I go and say, you know what? I, I need to go get a good water hit. So I do that. On down, let's just look at skin. Our skin is the largest organ in our body, as we also may know. And it is fed and nourished by the water that is within our system to nourish that skin. I have a couple of friends who are horrible, like non-water drinkers, tons of coffee. Yes, yeah, so we've had a discussion, but it doesn't matter. And uh, sadly, it's like they have such a preponderance of wrinkles and they look about 20 plus years older than they actually are. 
very sad. If they truly started hydrating, their skin would improve. Our body is a dynamic entity, y'all. That's what, Joseph, you made me say y'all. Uh, and that's because there's so much forgiveness in our bodies with what it does to adapt to take care of us and to promote our health, our vibrant health. So getting that water in and helping hydrate the skin. The gal who does my waxing, uh, I she can say it's like, ah, I think you've got, I think you're a little bit low on water. You need to, you need to, you need to start hydrating up a little bit more. We all, we all can forget. We all get busy and so on. Okay, so we've done the head, brain, done skin, uh, certainly the eyes as well. Now let's um, go into the vocal cord, throat, even heading down into our cardiovascular system. <clears throat> Water is critical. I uh, know of a fellow who's a dear friend of mine, and he was at the doctor, just getting a routine checkup one day. He was probably in his 50s or so, about that time, 50s, late 50s. Doesn't really matter. And his doctor was shocked because they had uh, taken his blood pressure, of course, take his vitals at the beginning of the, of the appointment. And his blood pressure was through the roof. I mean, way through the roof. And the doc just immediately reaches for a script pad and he said, okay, you have got to fulfill this script because your blood pressure levels are, they're, they're like just over the top and you need to fill this today before you leave. And the guy says, well, Bob was actually his name. And Bob said to the doc, he said, well, I've got another tactic I'm gonna do. And the doc's going like, no. He said, you, you will not make your follow-up appointment if you don't fulfill this script. Longer story shortened. Bob did not fill his high blood pressure medication script. Now, here again, disclaimer, I'm not a doctor and I'm giving you basics on how the body is structured and what it needs with respect to water. So Bob goes back in 30 days for his follow-up and the doctor said, oh, you know, takes the vitals and man, oh, thank gosh, you got that script filled and you started taking that blood pressure medication. You know, I, I was worried I wasn't going to see you. I, I figured you would have died. Bob goes, mm, yeah, well, I didn't fill the script. What? What do you mean you didn't fill the script? He said, no. He said, I knew that I needed to start a really strict regimen of hydration to get my body what it needs and to get my cardiovascular system what it needs in order to thrive and be happy and healthy. And it's not just for the blood. You know, it's for the blood vessels, arteries, veins, and keeping everything lubricated. Um, the heart is a muscle. Muscles and joints absolutely have to have good, good, high level of hydration. So Bob's still a happy camper today. No high blood pressure medications. I'm not telling you to not do your blood pressure medications. However, I am suggesting that you get up to the really recommended healthy levels of hydration. Okay, so cardiovascular system, touched a little bit on muscles and joints. Um, the, uh, a lot of the stiffness that people go, oh, it's arthritis starting, or oh, it's this, or it's rheumatism, or it's that. Yes, our soft tissue, our connective tissue can start to lessen and break down as we move those multiple times around the wheel of life. However, they are, I mean, think of a stretchy band. Think of a rubber band. What happens when you come across a rubber band that is really old? It's like dry and crackly. Well, that's because the moisture in it that's just inherent in that rubber has 
gone away. Likewise and similar to the muscles and the joints and the connective tissue, the fascia as we call it, get those babies happy and healthy with water. Okay, digestive, huge, huge requirement of adequate hydration to be happy and healthy for good regularity of elimination, also in helping digest your food. Now, one thing I'll say on that that's key is I've found, and a lot of practitioners recommend this, to not drink an awful lot of fluids with your meal. You know, if you're having a bit of water or you have water or tea or another beverage before or after, a little bit during the meal, totally fine. But when we flood the system with too much liquid while we're eating, what it does is it dilutes the salivary enzymes that are the enzymes that go in to digest our food. So that's going to make digestion a little more difficult on the body. It's going to have to work harder. And indigestion is a uh, can be a huge sign of uh, inadequate water content in your body. So digestive system, huge. Uh, what else? Uh, oh, certainly our body temperature. Water helps, our water level in our body helps regulate our body temperature. Having adequate supply of water keeps it cool when it's hot and helps move everything and uh, circulate our blood and energy around to maintain a healthy body temperature. That brings me to something that people really have a hard time with in winter, and that is getting and staying hydrated in winter. They go, oh, I don't want to drink water because it's too cold. Well, don't drink cold water. And I always recommend keep the ice out of your water. It's too cold. It's a shock to the system. Actually, for other beverages as well, uh, you know, minimize the ice if you can because it's just such a drastic, drastic temperature difference between this ice cold beverage that you're drinking and the body's 98.6 temperature. So in winter time, it's even more important to pay attention to and really being diligent about drinking adequate water because we just don't, I mean, it's, it's, it almost seems counterintuitive. However, think about what goes on in the winter time. Most places, it's colder, and so we have heaters going in our cars, we have heaters going in the home. Both of those are really drying, they're drying the air. And uh, we're also sleeping usually more warmly at night, um, hopefully not with an electric blanket. That's my thing. Uh, so it's just automatically drying us. You know, we go in and out of buildings. So we've got that drastic temperature shift. It's really tough on our bodies. So in the winter time, one tip, certainly drink room temperature water. You can drink hot water, you know, warm water. And, uh, you know, your teas, and yes, people say, well, you mean I can't drink coffee? It's like, I'm not saying you can't drink coffee. But know the substances that are naturally, because of what they are, that are pulling the water out of your system. In other words, they're diuretics. Coffee, alcohol. Just be mindful of that. And so I say, no, you can have your coffee. Just know that if you're drinking a big old mug of coffee, you need to do another additional mug of water to your water quota for the day. All right. Another tip on how to make sure that you're drinking. Have really good quality water bottles, i.e. glass, 
in your home, in your car. Here's one. This is one that I have on my desk and I uh, love it because they have found that we end up drinking more if we're using a straw. I think just because it's so easy. So another one I love is um, these uh, bottles with the European wire top cap. And um, another one I didn't bring in, but uh, I can put a picture on the live uh, page after we get done. Uh, but having glass or a stainless bottle in your car. Key, 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 key. And that, um, darn it, I was gonna bring it in, it's okay. This water bottle that I have in my car, I've got actually uh, two that uh, of them that I keep in my bedroom on either side of um, the bed, you know, I'll reach over in the middle of the night, get up to do the pee thing, and it's like, okay, take a drink of water. Another good time to get water in is when you get up in the middle of the night. Um, but these these glass water bottles, they have just like a flip top, and it's so great for the car because you just lean it along the, I mean, I've got a, a stick shift car, so I just lean it down along the console, uh, on the so on the floor, and then I can safely, very safely, be driving. My eyes do not leave the road. I reach down, I can pick up that water bottle, I can flip the top with my finger and just start drinking. And I, my eyes have never left the road. So I can hydrate while I'm driving, it's a great practice. So if there is nothing, nothing, that you take from this Facebook Live I'm doing tonight on water. I could probably go on for hours about water. But the one thing is, please, 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 I'm begging of you, do not drink plastic water bottle water. And do not have these in your car <laughs> that gets hot even on a day that's maybe 65 degrees and overcast. Plastic, water bottle, water is toxic. Most bottled water is pretty toxic actually. But plastic water, plastic bottled water is horrible. I've got a picture that I took <clears throat> at one of my local grocers, a big retailer, um, a couple of summers ago and out front it was a hot day it was like 95 degrees out in the front of the store they had pallets of cases of bottled plastic water in the sun so what's going on with that well you're just adding and accelerating the leaching process of that horrible cheap plastic into your water. It is carcinogenic, it's toxic. So please, you can do, you don't have to go buy a fancy water bottle. The first one that I showed you, this one, it's a pasta bottle, you know, it was jarred pasta sauce that thankfully has the same uh, size neck as the small mouth canning jars. And then Ball, the canning people, make these cool um, inserts and it's great. There you go. You can get those like at your Ace Hardware store or you can order them um, online. Anyhow, so with the please no plastic water bottle, there's so many reasons not to drink bottled water that being one of the ones one of the major ones is that it's 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 totally toxic number two and this is not necessarily in order although that toxicity is number one there is no regulation virtually for bottled water in other words as you've all probably heard somebody a manufacturer they can go take municipal water right out of a tap, 
They can run it through maybe a loose carbon filter or something similar to like a Brita. Might taste a little bit better. And then they're selling it as this great bottled water. So there's really no regulation on bottled water. So you have no idea what you're getting in that water. Really, really, really scary. Another thing about bottled water is it is not sustainable. So there, of course, is the plastic water, the plastic bottle itself, right? That, okay, they're recyclable. Or if you live in the great state of Oregon that has a wonderful renewed bottle bill, you can uh, get your deposit back. But the reality is there are over 11 million plastic bottles, and that would include like sodas and so on. There are over 11 million plastic beverage bottles being utilized around the world every minute. You want to guess and how much of those are recycled? It's paltry. Like virtually none of them are recycled. It's a super low percentage. So that plastic is, of course, winding up in the landfills along the side of the road, what have you. So not sustainable, certainly for the earth, not sustainable for us, for our health. And it's also not sustainable for our water supply. The truth is that for manufacturing one liter of bottled water, it takes four liters of water to create that one liter of end product bottled water. That's in the manufacturing of the plastic, that's in the processing of the water, and the whole manufacturing of it. That is crazy wasteful. We only have so much water on the planet. So, as you can tell, I'm pretty cranky about bottled water because it's just not good for so many, so many reasons. Um, let's go ahead and, and roll into, okay, if not bottled water, and I even say, you know, not even delivered bottled water, you know, the big five gallon jugs of uh, bottled water or the ones that you can fill in the stores. One, it's, ex it's, it's all, it's expensive. It's uh, not helpful as far as the containers, not regulated. And it is not sustainable. You've got, with delivery water, you've got the trucks driving around, you've got the, all the manufacturing of the bottles and so on. So what do you do? You've got, what are your options? Our options are bottled water, tap water, filtered water. That's pretty much it. I am a huge proponent of filtered water. Um, tap water uh, is in the, the unhealthfulness of our tap water across the United States is and ha was just recently declared uh, one of the most pressing public health issues in our country. This was before COVID-19, but the reason for that is that number one, and again, this is not in order, this is how it's coming to me. Number one, we have ancient water distribution systems. Our infrastructure for water and sewer, wastewater, they are ancient. And we see in the news, we see uh, headlines of, oh gee, a water main broke, or, gee, there was a sinkhole that happened in the middle of, we had this happen in Portland a few years ago when we had such extremely cold weather, but they literally just collapse. The pipes are falling apart 
And to look inside a cross section of those pipes, it is so disgusting because they're just all corroding. That's bringing your water to you and to me. So that's a whole nother drill with the infrastructure piece for somebody else to address because we have so much infrastructure that needs to be upgraded in our country. Um, but you've got that. Then you have also with those pipes, especially here in Portland and other areas that use surface water for drinking water, uh, we've got in that surface water, it is acidic. So it's snow melt and it's rainwater. <clears throat> those waters are inherently acidic. And so you have, with that acidic water, as it passes through galvanized pipe, as it passes through pipes with lead solder, you now have that acidic water that's come into contact with that lead solder and the lead in pipe from way back when. And that acidity is leaching the lead out of those pipes. The truth is you rarely have lead just naturally occurring in water. Very, virtually unheard of once in a while. But you get the lead which is highly toxic and it's neurotoxin. It's really nasty for especially the most susceptible populations for lead contamination as far as physiological effects is pregnant women and um, young children. We've got those developing bodies and the lead uh, poisoning is just is just horrific. So that's just one contaminant. There are over 200 contaminants of health concern found in U.S. water. That's not to say that all 200 are in every single water supply, but there are 200 that have been and are regulated by the EPA. But we've got, uh, just to name a few, we have lead, we have heavy metals, we have disinfecting byproducts. I'll talk about those in a sec. We have the disinfectants themselves, which is like chlorine and chloramine. Those are the agents that are added to the water supply before it's distributed so that it is disinfecting the water. There are, um, oh my gosh, we've got an, an excess of um, other minerals and um, arsenic, which is a heavy metal, but it stands alone on its uh, toxicity and poisoning. So there's so much. Oh, and let me not forget nitrates. Those are coming from runoff of pesticides and herbicides. Huge issue in neighboring communities to me because that particular river that is feeding that uh, water supply is going through a large agricultural area whose fields, lots of Christmas trees and other crops, a lot of nurseries, that the runoff from those fields is going right into ultimately the river, which is ultimately feeding into the water system for many, 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 many cities. Okay. So lots of contaminants. And this is not, not at all to scare people as much as it is, although it should be scary, but to educate. My, my three-prong focus is to inform, educate, and inspire. I want to inform people of what is true and happening with respect to their health that I know of and um, I can speak of with a bit of um, informative uh, credit and um, educating, okay, what are those? What are those uh, threats to our health? And then thirdly, 
to inspire action, to inspire taking steps to, oh gosh, well, hmm, is there anything I can do? Yes, there are things that you can do. So let's um, get, wow, okay, it's already half an hour. I don't want to go on too much longer, but um, I do just want to address briefly one of those, um, and very importantly too, actually, is yes, we do have options. We have choices that we can make. Don't do bottled water. Create your own water bottle. Buy a good one, what have you. And the other really great and uh, super peace of mind providing act that we can do and choice that we can make is getting a really great filter. And um, as some of you know, I have um, been a drinking water nerd for the almost 13 years now, but uh, learning about contaminants, learning about our water supply, learning about what's what out there, what's available, and so on, how, they, how these contaminants affect our health, uh, what's the EPA doing, and so on. And in conjunction with that, also recommending one brand of water filter because truly it is bar none uh, the best line of water filters out there, and that's the Multipure. And people go, oh, okay, yeah. They say, it's like, oh, you just want to sell me a filter. It's like, no, I don't want to sell you a filter. I want to inform you. I want to educate you. And I want to inspire you and give you the information, education. And then you can make your choice. But that is, you know, I'm a teacher. I'm an educator just by nature, in case you couldn't tell. And, uh, you know, having having this option. So, the uh, the one of the main things I want to say about water filters is there are a crap ton of them out there on the market. I mean, it's getting close to almost ten thousand different filters that are tested and certified or not by NSF, which is a third party testing lab. And that's a whole heck of a lot of, of options. However, <clears throat> when you really get down to it, it, it really does come to um, the multi-peer in the sense of how many contaminants these systems are certified to reduce. And what's this testing thing about? The testing thing, the NSF is a third-party testing lab. So a manufacturer pays a crank load of money they pay per contaminant that they want to have their system certified for. The company, the manufacturer, goes to NSF and says, here, we have this filter. So let me back up for a sec. Think of NSF as like the UL, the underwriter laboratories of uh, consumer health products. So they uh, certify nutritional supplements, they certify water filters, um, other water systems, and so on, a whole slew of things. Been around forever. Third party, which means uh, they can't, what they say is based on what testing they've done. So <clears throat> what's why certify? I mean, what, what's the big deal with that? Because the big deal is that Anybody can say anything about what their product does or doesn't do. So uh, I can say, you know, I just bench pressed 10,000 pounds this morning. How about that? And you're like, yeah, right. Yeah, right, Heather. Come on. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. It's like, however, if I had someone that was taking video or was the one loading up the weights on that, that they could verify, certify that that claim that I just made was true. Don't believe me. Believe this person over here. They saw it. Maybe there's three people. Maybe there's five people. Maybe, you know, whatever. So that's the importance of third-party testing. Because don't take my word for it. Don't take the company's word for it. 
but oh you want you say that your system does reduction on these 85 plus contaminants and these emerging compounds which is a whole nother class of of contaminants Okay, well then we are going to, as you know, the company goes and says, these contaminants we want tested for these claims. And that's what that's the testing that NSF does. And it either comes back and it's like, yep, it does it. It's certified. And they put their stamp on it. It's a long process. But that's why that's why certification is huge. Absolutely huge. And last thing I'm going to say about that is the uh, one of the systems, kind of like the workhorse system, if you will, of the multi pure line, uh, the Aqua Versa, has been rated number one by Consumer Reports and Consumers Digest for the last umpteen years. So there's another disinterested party. In fact, the reality is the company cannot even say uh, Consumer Reports or Consumers Digest because that would be a conflict, even though they have. They can say, oh, a leading consumer magazine or institution has rated us, blah, blah, blah. So lots of information, and I know it's a lot. Like I said, I could talk for about water forever. And if you want to get some more information about like the, the drinking water tips and uh, so on, you can go on my website, irishealingarts.com, and uh, just type water or drinking water in the search bar, and some blogs will come up, and so on. And uh, what I, <clears throat> I've also got uh, on there, I think it's on, well, I can put a link, but there's a really great video. It's a short video that a dear friend of mine did. She's actually my water guru. And talking about, as I started, you know, all the different systems and how water is so, so vital for vibrant health. And I also have the remake from last night uploading to YouTube. So that'll be available. I'll give the link for those that uh, could only take like maybe five minutes of the constantly interrupted audio. Uh, but I'll put that, I'll post that too on my Facebook page. Thank you so much for watching. I will be posting these Facebook Lives to YouTube, to my YouTube channel, which is Heather Miche. And you can go there and also get a little bit of singing if you feel like, ah, oh, you know, I just, I need a little accommodative action. Go check out one of the songs I've posted up there. Several, several, um, tunes that I've put up there with me singing. And if you like it, I'd love for you to subscribe to the uh, YouTube channel. And you can also subscribe to my mailing list, which is on the website, my website, Iris Healing Arts. And I promise you won't get spammed. And my newsletters are monthly and a guaranteed less than five minute read each time. So, have a great evening. Thanks again. And if you have any questions or would uh, like to know more about drinking water, I will happily do an assessment of your water quality report and tell you what contaminants are of highest concern for your health. Okay. Be well, my friends.